I'm sure you just know exactly what I have come here to do. Um, I was always going to do this. I actually pre-ordered this fucking thing um, so that I can review this, um, like it or loathe it. I was always going to do this. Um, so yeah, I'll get into that in a second. But first of all, what we've got going on in the background, by the way, uh, I'm playing a record in the background on my dad's old kind of record stack, uh, record kind of turntable stack thing, which I really dig. Uh, but yeah, I will be getting up to change that or flip that or whatever um, when it comes to it. So yeah, bear with me. I'm not editing shit. Um, but yeah, this is the brand new sophomore full length album um, by Spirit Possession. Um, so these guys are based out Portland, Portland, Oregon, if I can get my words out. Um, and they play a kind of really bamboozling, very strange style of black metal. Um, I've seen a lot of people kind of comparing this to Negative Plane. Um, I even saw somebody um, compare it to Malakarpatan, which I also see. Um, very kind of um, high register riffing, very lead heavy. Um, lots of kind of heavy metal inspired riffs um, and even thrash metal to me. Um, the drumming is very thrash inspired as well. Very blistering, bludgeoning doesn't let up lots of very weird um, and kind of zany riff transitions which kind of move between the sort of high twiddling fiddly stuff and the kind of chunky um, sort of uh, face scrunching kind of head banging riffs um, which are kind of few and far between on this thing but when they come in they hit that spot perfectly so yeah um, the album's called Of The Sign by the way I didn't mention that and this was put out through um, Profound Law Records uh, this is one of my favourite albums that have come out so far this year. Um, please go and check it out if you like the sound of any of that. Spirit Possession with Of The Sign. Um, yeah, fantastic shit. Hopefully that will stay there. That will probably fall off at some point during this. Um, so yeah. Anyway, let's get straight into it. So I've actually just got the CD of this album. And the album that I'm going to be talking about and potentially tearing apart is this one and i'm sure if you haven't been living under a rock or if you haven't been dead um this is metallica's brand new full-length album and um, technically their 11th full-length album uh, if you're not counting like lulu and garage inc um, this is entitled 72 seasons uh, this came out two days ago on friday um through blackened recordings um yeah so what I'm going to do is just an album review. Uh, I probably won't do like track by track, but I've got my notes here on the computer quite conveniently so I can refer to them as I'm ranting and raving. Um, but yeah, so if you're not familiar with Metallica somehow, they're effectively the biggest metal band in the world. If you're not going to kind of argue and say Iron Maiden, but they're definitely right up there. Um, they are based out of California, I believe. Um, they are a four piece they've been going for years and years. They started out as a thrash band um, and kind of from the kind of 90s onwards they've sort of been like a heavy metal sort of hard rock hybrid uh, dabbling between both um, and more recently they've kind of been dabbling more in their kind of older style um, but with obviously their kind of cleaner more kind of modern production and sound. So yeah. Um, going straight into it, so I'll start with the kind of good stuff that sort of, um, I don't know, kept me interested enough to get through it, basically. Um, so first of all, I am going to commend the production job on this one. Um, Metallica have had issues with production ever since, like, some of their early records, um, and Justice For All, notably, where they just kind of completely removed the bass guitar for some reason. Um, and when I say they, I mean Lars did. Um, this thing is crisp. You can hear every goddamn thing that's going on. Um, it suits the music perfectly. I don't think we need any kind of um, additional sort of crunch or kind of edge for this thing. It kind of serves its purpose. It's written to draw people in. It's written to sell um, whilst kind of uh, keeping a hold of some of those older metal fans. Um, yeah, production is great. You can hear every component, um, and I don't feel like anything's really lost on this thing. Um, as for the kind of guitar riffs and things, James Hetfield is an absolute riff monster. Um, if you ask me, he is the best thing about Metallica, especially nowadays. Um, that dude just knows how to write killer riffs, 
Um, he's clearly inspired by lots of different things. So on this one, we get lots of kind of older heavy metal references. We get those hard rock moments. Um, there are kind of hints of blues. Um, there are even some riffs that sound a bit like Venom. Um, tracks like uh, Screaming Suicide, that really kind of, um, it's got that bit of grit that um, kind of Metallica's been missing, I feel like. Um, there's not too much in the way of thrash on this thing. It's more of a kind of heavy metal uh, direction, but it's got that kind of thrashy guitar tone, which I really like. Um, yeah, James Hetfield's a monster. Um, some of the better riffs on this thing um, include the title track, 72 Seasons, Shadows Fall. Like the first kind of half of this record, basically, the riffs are splendid. They kept me gripped. Um, and yeah, James Hetfield's just fantastic. He is great. And speaking of which, we must talk about his vocal performance on this thing. Um, he does not sound like he's slowing down, basically. He sounds as good as ever, and he sounds incredibly strong. He's clearly kind of keeping at it and practicing constantly. He's constantly improving. Um, and yeah, he just keeps this band interesting in kind of whichever ways he normally does, basically. Um, his lyrics have never been a strong point in Metallica, in my opinion. I feel like ever since Kill 'Em All, the lyrics have been kind of just a bit wishy-washy and just a bit like uninteresting and just kind of there to fill the sound, if you know what I mean, or there just so there are words for the vocals, if that makes sense. And this is no different. It's not horrible. It's not fantastic. It's just kind of Metallica doing what they do or James doing what he does. Um, I can't complain about it, um, thankfully, because lyrics, when they're really bad, they really fucking bug me and take me out of an album, and yeah, they don't do that on this one. Um, Kirk Hammett on lead guitars, he has lots of great moments on this thing, for sure, um, however, well, actually, I'll get into the however in a minute, but um, there's a solo at the end of the closing track, In a Mortar, which is really, really fucking cool. The tempo, like, increases just a little bit because that's one of the slower tracks on the album. Um, and, yeah, he just brings out this emotional solo piece, and it is beautiful. Really, really fucking cool. There are a few moments that really kind of grip a hold of me on this that Kirk kind of um, brings out of his uh, kind of box of tricks, if you will. Um, and, yeah, they don't go amiss. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, and, finally, Robert Trujillo on bass. Um, he just kind of does the job. He's never been a bassist that kind of does anything too fancy. He kind of just fills the void. Um, he gets a couple of kind of solo moments on this um, where he kind of opens a couple of tracks, um, which, I mean, they're kind of cool, but nothing too fancy. He just kind of does his job. It's good. Oh, it's fine, I guess. Like, there's nothing to write home about here, but yeah, good stuff anyway. Um, he's doing a good job with this band. Um, but yeah, um, which kind of neatly brings me over to what I wanted to talk about with this thing um, so honestly there was more good uh, to talk about with this than I expected there to be if I'm going to be brutally honest um, but this thing has all of the problems that I did think it was going to um, so let's talk about that fucking obnoxious elephant in the room which is Lars Ulrich on drums now that guy, while he's always kind of done the job for Metallica, like he, he can keep tempo, um, he can kind of, as I say, just do his job, but I just feel like Mr. Ulrich, he never seems to be improving, despite being a professional musician who is playing constantly. He in fact seems to be kind of going backwards, which is just insane to say considering how long he's been playing um he never seems to just he never seems to do anything where i'm like okay that's cool that's different he's brought that like out of some repertoire that we didn't know he had he's never seeming to learn he's never taken inspiration from other places he's just kind of sitting in his comfort zone um if i had 20 pence for every single single stroke snare roll that he does on this thing i would have about 50 quid at the end of this fucking thing um i don't understand why that's what he kind of brings out that's what he thinks we want from kind of drum fills all the way through the album now that i've said that and if you didn't notice that before you will now 
it is truly truly horrific um there are so many of them there is approximately a million of them on this thing um what are you doing Lars I listened to 20 minutes of this thing listening closely to the drumming as I usually do with every album and I swear to god in 20 minutes it took 20 minutes to get the first tom note one note one single fucking tom note in a fill which is just he didn't touch it and he doesn't I'm not sure there's a single moment on here where he actually touches his ride cymbal. We just get that kind of trashy open hi-hat sound all the way through and it gets very grating if you're kind of listening to the drumming. Um, that might just be a me thing where just like I, I like to torture myself and, and hone in on things that bother me about this. But man, it's just really lazy to me. Um, lots of his kind of um, drumming is very D-beat inspired. Um, it sounds kind of cool for the first few minutes, um, but then he's kind of using the same goddamn thing in every track. Um, the exact same kind of D-beat sort of thing with lots of crash cymbals on strange moments like with snare drums and stuff, as he always has, which I've always found kind of obnoxious. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Lars just makes this a bit more of a challenging lesson. If Metallica had like a, a better drummer, I feel like I would enjoy this a lot more. But yeah, so that's Lars out the way. I don't want to butcher the guy too much because he's clearly he's clearly an okay drummer. He just doesn't do anything new. And the stuff that he was doing is kind of boring. Like, we're, we're done with it. Let's see something new. But anyway, let's talk about just the album in general. So this is far too fucking long. This comes in at an hour and 17 minutes, I believe, in total. And... I think that is inexcusable for an album like this. I think that is completely self-indulgent. It's a problem that Iron Maiden have had with their later albums, uh, Senjutsu uh, specifically. I had a lot of bad things to say about that because of the runtime. I can't tell if it's like um, kind of self-importance or if it's incompetence and they can't tell when things need ch uh, like trimming and what needs trimming, but they need to do a better job of the editing on this thing. Not everything on this thing has to be in there. Not everything on this thing is good. Um, it really needs just the fat trimming it. My fucking God, it is some thick, thick ass fat. Um, so yeah, way too long. It becomes a chore to listen to. After the first kind of five tracks, I checked the track listing and I was like, why have I got this many tracks left? Why? This is an album you might be able to get through maybe once in full, and then it will always be an album that you listen to just by specific tracks. Um, yeah, mind-blowing that they kind of cranked this out, but whatever, I guess they just thought it was all brilliant, and it isn't. Moving on to Kirk Hammett. So, um, although he has some great kind of solo moments on this thing, I feel like he's kind of throwing in solos onto a lot of these tracks for the sake of throwing solos in there. I don't feel like a lot of them are inspired. I feel like a lot of them are kind of just going through the motions. Um, while the good stuff is really good, it's really noticeable when a track just doesn't need what he is doing on the track, if that makes sense. So he's just kind of, there's no passion in it, if you ask me, or at least that's what the impression I get when I'm listening to it. I don't expect kind of kill them all standard um solos by any means because obviously those days are gone they're not as pissed off they're not as fast and um, that's absolutely fine but i just want a little bit more in the way of i just want a little bit less filler basically they feel like filler solos and i'm not about that um so yeah and not to bash kirk because he is a fucking great player and i've seen a few of these tracks live um like on youtube videos and whatever where they've been on like talk shows and he adds a bit of flair um, to his live performances, but just on record, it just sounds a bit uninspired um, and a bit lacklustre, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, I'll just wrap that up neatly because this side's pretty much finished on the record. Am I bored of Metallica's sound in general? I think so. Did I go into this expecting anything amazing? No, in fact, my expectations couldn't have been much lower without falling asleep. Um, this was better than I expected, but also kind of exactly what I expected. It's far too long. There's lots of filler. Um, 
But there is a lot of good stuff on here. I don't think Metallica are in the shit. I don't think they need to stop. But I do think they need somebody to tell them when to cut things out. They are not perfect, even though they seem to think they are, judging by the length of this thing. Um, but yeah, this isn't a horrible effort. I'm going to rate this a 6.1 which is higher than I was expecting it to be. I was expecting this to be kind of sub five. Um, so yeah, it's unchallenging. It's partially dad rock. It's partially kind of beginner metal and that's fine, like whatever. Um, but yeah, there's some cool shit on here, but yeah, it's a 6.1 if you ask me. It's above average. I can listen to it. Will I listen to it often? Absolutely not. It's far too long as I keep saying. Um, Lars, sort your shit out. Um, yeah, so that's that. That's Metallica with 72 seasons. They're basically my thoughts. Don't hate it. Certainly far from love it. Um, yeah, so as I say, I've got a few kind of records that will be coming in at some point. I have no idea when, um, but I'll certainly be slow with my uploads. But as I say, I am not going anywhere and i am still reading comments i'm still kind of keeping an eye on the subscribers and things like that and it has been appreciated you guys have kept subscribing even though i've been completely fucking silent um yeah so thank you so goddamn much i will try to be back asap um i'm working a lot and as i say my circumstances have indeed changed um but yeah thank you so much as always it is eternally appreciated um, go and listen to this Metallica album. Don't let your elitist cap kind of um, cover your eyes. Um, there's some good shit on there, um, especially if you just like Metallica sound. Um, but yeah, take care as always. I hope you are doing fucking fantastically in the meantime. Um, and I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>